that's actually really good. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna love that. You're gonna love that a lot. Amazing. Come on, have some. Have some. Oh my god, that's so good. You like? Yeah, that's so good. Okay, so welcome back to Malaysia. We're now in Georgetown in Penang, which is an island just off the mainland connected by the most ridiculous bridge you'll ever see. Hopefully I'll get a chance to show you at some point in this vlog. Now again, we're only here for a sort of fleeting visit. We've got one full day, as tomorrow afternoon we're flying to Lankara, which is another island. So we've got lots to do in the day. We're not gonna do a tour because the good thing about Georgetown is all connected. So why Penang? So there's a few things that make Penang pretty special that made it so we wanted to come and check it out. First of all, it's historical architecture. There's got lots of old, almost almost ancient buildings here. So old and so sort of well known and appreciated that it's actually been gifted or rewarded rather with as being listed as a UNESCO heritage site. It's also known as the culinary capital of Malaysia and some people will even go as far as saying it's the best place to eat in all of Southeast Asia. They all sound like good enough reasons to come visit. So Samir and I are gonna head out now and gonna go see what Penang has to offer. first port of call is what they call the Blue Mansion. It's a very, very, very old building in Malaysia and it's called Blue because I think it's because of the paint they use originally like to protect it, made it turn blue. come out this tour and I imagine for you guys it's probably just been a series of shots at what looks like you know an old Chinese building but I think it deserves a little context from us mm -hmm. because what we learned was some really interesting stuff so let's first start off with who originally owned the building so the building was originally owned by a man called Chung Fatsi who was like a it's like a rags to riches story he came from China over to this part of the world and he's sort of like an entrepreneur sort of character so he came from nothing and ended up starting things like the first bank of China or the first mm. railroad in China and obviously having his fingers in many pies all over the world over this part of Southeast Asia as well as China but aside from the person that actually owned it there was so much more that we learned we learned a lot about feng shui about Chinese architecture and loads of stuff that I've always noticed about Chinese and Asian buildings but I never knew the reason why like for instance whenever I've been to like different sorts of Chinese or Asian architecture you always see the writing everywhere lettering and I just sort of figured that that might be you know the name of the person that owned the house or or something like that or obviously within religious stuff it's like scriptures and that sort of thing but what we learned today was that a lot of Chinese houses and Asian houses has that writing and all they're saying is just like positive words so they like to surround themselves with like positive thinking and sort of happiness and things that are going to help develop them and make them get the most out of life really really really, really interesting. interesting this was Samira's pick I won't lie to you, I was a little bit dubious about it at the start. I was like, oh, Blue House, it'd be cool for Instagram <laughs> pictures, yeah, sure. But what else is it going to do? But I, I'm really glad we came. It was really, yeah. really interesting. And I hope that how we've explained it to you can make you guys a little bit interested in learning more about it. It's definitely worth a Google or if you ever come here mm -hmm. to, to definitely have a visit. But that's enough of the Blue Mansion. Let's go head out and see some more Penang. Yeah. We've been told about this place which is on a road called New Lane which is very similar to what we did in Kuala Lumpur where it's just like a road for the street food. Uh, I've seen some pictures of this place, it's a hawker market, that's what they call it, hawker food, it's more like street food sort of thing, loads of little stools, little uh, plastic seats and tables they put outside for you to sit down and you sort of try loads of little different things. So that's where we're going to head now and see if it is as good as they make it out to be. if the pronunciation is awfully wrong but it's meant to be a Penang specialty let's see how it tastes
that's actually really good. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna love that. You're gonna love that a lot. Amazing. Come on, have some. Have some. Oh my god, that's so good. You like? Yeah, that's so good. Right, so it's our last morning in Penang. We fly to Langkawi this afternoon, and there's one more thing that we needed to do. We'd heard about the view from Penang Hill. We just bought a ticket. We're about to get on La Funicula. It takes you all the way up. I think it's about a, couple, a good couple hundred meters yeah. to the top of a sort of mini peak at which you're meant to get a good view. It's not the clearest of days, but we, we needed to do it, and we ran out of time, so exactly. fingers crossed. come just a bit lower than the, the main viewing platform by the top of the funicular station because it's just really really busy I, I was hoping a little bit it would be kind of like similar to that view that we saw in Lake Como yeah so you take the cable car or the funicular up and then it's sort of just like open playing field sort of do what you want but here it's that so structured there's, it's almost like Thor Park up here it's I mean, like there's no rides, kids. but it's yeah. like it is massively an attraction which is weird because the rest of Penang so far has been pretty like quite local and like kind of holding on to the heritage a little bit but this is like the complete opposite like super touristy so we've come down away from that a little bit to take some snaps of the view but we're losing it every second because the clouds are getting lower and lower and lower as that storm comes in going to be the end of our Penang part of our trip because we're about to head back into town grab our bags go to the airport and fly to Langkawi which will be in another video if you have enjoyed this video let me know of course I appreciate that we haven't we probably left a few bits out um, in terms of what we've been doing and things that we've done on in these videos so far so if you do have any questions about what we've been doing or some advice or of the places we've been then drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them but yeah like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in Langkawi